Hi, it's Pastor James, and I am sitting here in the nursery area that we have at College Hill, and I'd like to share with you an insight from our journey in the book of Luke. This last Sunday, we looked at Luke chapter 2. At the end of that chapter, there is an account from Jesus' childhood. Uh, we imagine what it would be like to have been Luke and talking to Mary and maybe saying, share with me something about Jesus' childhood and her turning and saying, well, let me share with you this one story and begins to talk about what it was like when he was 12 years old. They went to the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem it says it was their custom to do that every year. But this particular year, Jesus stayed behind and Mary and Joseph didn't realize it until they had traveled a day with the caravan back towards home. Uh, Jesus is missing for that day. It takes another day to get back to Jerusalem and it took another day before they finally find him in the temple. He was missing for three days. What it must have been like, the anxiety and not just missing a child, but thinking we've lost the Son of God. One of the reasons why I'm glad that this account's in the Bible is to know that raising Jesus, who wasn't just like family on easy street, they had their difficulties like all of the families have their difficulties. And yet it says about this, as Mary is sharing, must have been with Luke here in chapter two, that uh, she treasured all these things in her heart. Verse 51. I pray that as you're in the context of family and life, that despite the difficulties, you can have that kind of treasure that God would have for you. But how does that occur? How does it happen? How do we get this kind of result? As in the next verse, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. How do we experience that in our own lives and with our children? God made a choice. He chose a special family for his son. He planted Jesus in the family of Joseph and Mary for a reason. And I have to think one of the reasons this was was because of their faith. Well, how do we cultivate that? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, it had some similar choices. The people of God back then were not always making the right choices. Many of them were turning away. And it says there, beginning with verse 5, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He'll be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. You know, when we don't apply the principles of God in our lives when they're not built on the foundation of God. It's not that we won't experience some kind of momentary prosperity or good things, but the destination of that direction is not where we want to head. This is what this warning is about. It goes on to say, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Notice in this passage, it doesn't mean that we won't experience the heat or the drought, but what it does mean is that our family tree can remain green, right? When our rootedness is in God. I was asking my children this week in our own family devotional time, which is not easy to get together. It's not like our children come into the room saying, share with us wisdom and revelation from God. It, it takes a fight even getting together as a family, right? Well, we were talking about this and what would their lives be like if we weren't the kind of family that was striving after these things? Uh, what would their lives be like if it wasn't built on Christ? If we weren't encouraging them to have lives built on his word and in Jesus? 
all of them had a sober response. They recognized they wouldn't be the people they are today, and they're grateful for God's grace, the love of God, and God's blessing on our lives. You may be thinking to yourself, maybe your family's not like that. Maybe you've experienced woundedness and brokenness in your own family. Um, maybe you've experienced that in the context of church family. Truly, all of us go through life, experience woundedness and brokenness, and I don't want to make light of anything that you've experienced in your life. But I do want you to think about the choices in response to it. Is the right choice to pull away from the things of God, just trust in ourselves? Is that going to get us to the destination of where we want to be in life? Or is it to grow deeper into the things of God? I want to encourage you to go deeper. Don't let the enemy who's attacking our lives, attacking our children, attacking the church, attacking the structure of family within society, get the best of you in this. The things that God has for us is rooted in Him. Those things are blessing and, and good. This is the kind of foundation and this is the kind of family that God has chosen. It's the kind of people that we can choose to be as well. It's not easy. It's something that happens every day. And it's the reason why we need a, to be surrounded by a family of faith of people who are also going in that same direction. If you don't have that kind of family of faith, I'd like to invite you to join with me. If you're an early riser for something early, well, come with me to Doylesville United Methodist Church at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings, or here at College Hill at 11 a.m., uh, or join us over Facebook Live uh, with the stream at 11 a.m. on Sundays. I encourage you to become a part of a family of faith if you don't have one. Strive deeply in the things of God. Build a foundation. Let's be faithful in our generation. Let us grow in Him. I pray these things for you in Jesus' name. Amen.